Welcome. In this series, we'll introduce you to basic mixing terms and techniques to set you on the right track for your future music production. We'll show you how we went from this to this. Check the video info for an index if you want to skip parts. This time, reverbs. From common use cases to special effects. In the previous video in this series, we looked at the stereo field, where sounds are spatially localized. In other words, what direction and location you hear them coming from. In this video, we'll look at the special case of reverberation. Reverb is the non-direct or reflected sound in a room or space. After they bounce around the walls and off objects in the space, the initial sound reflections build up. Every sound that isn't going directly from the sound source to the listener's ears is reverb. In essence, reverb is a set of closely spaced echoes, with usually first or early reflections that may be distinct, and then a series of other echoes that blur together decaying and level. This wash of sounds extends the length of short sounds and choruses longer ones. From reverberation, we perceive a few things. The distance you are from the source. Relative loudness and arrival time of the reverb versus the direct audio. The size and shape of the room, or acoustic space, from the density and sound of the reverb. Regular shaped rooms create a recognizable ringing tone. We all know what a bathroom sounds like, for example. The reflectiveness of the walls and materials it is made from. Hard, rock-like surfaces create longer, brighter reverberations with more bass than painted plasterboard, for example, that dulls the top end and reduces bass that tends to pass through the walls. Which is why you can hear the subwoofer outside the club. Note, every physical object, what it's made from, its shape and size inside a room, also influences the sound of the reverb. You can change the sound of a room to suit your needs by strategically placing objects made from different materials at key points. This process is called room treatment and certainly goes far beyond the scope of this video. There are several types of reverbs typically used today. Let's cover them. Algorithmic reverbs like Fruity Reverb 2 use a mathematical formula to create reverb that defines a room's shape, size and absorption properties. For brevity's sake, let's think of sound waves as straight lines in a 3D space. Algorithmic reverb is a basic approximation of reflections in a real space, where the source sound is treated as a multitude of radiating signals or rays that bounce off of the surfaces of the simulated room. The more bounces or further the distance traveled from the sound source, the more it is attenuated, turned down and level. It is also low pass and all pass filtered, depending on how many times the signal has bounced around before arriving back at the listening position. Fruity Reverb 2's most important parameters include size, dry versus wet, decay and damping. Let's consider them. Size will change your perception of how big the room is, impacting the early reflections, the reflections that arrive back at the listening position first. Larger sizes mean the early reflections take longer to arrive relative to the dry signal. Room size also impacts how quickly the reflections build up. Waves have longer to travel in larger rooms, so build in density more slowly. A smaller room will suddenly burst with a dense reverb sound. There's also a wet and dry control. The dry decides how much of the original audio is passed to the plug-in output, and the wet controls how much of the reverb signal is present in the output. ER determines the level of the early reflections. The balance between these two determines how far away the source sound appears to be. If the dry is much louder than the reverb, it will be perceived as close. If it's at about the same level, then it will be perceived as further away. Decay relates to how large and or reflective we perceive the space to be. The decay control sets how long it takes the reverberation to fade. The technical target is a level of minus 60 decibels. This is often referred to as reverberation time 60. It's important to note, the reverb does not just stop after this time. The decay time only decides the point at which it will cross below a meaningfully audible level. 
so it's possible a reverb will sound longer than you set with the decay parameter. This is important as compression or saturation applied after a reverb can extend the length again by bringing up the loudness of the reverb tail. The bass multiplier increases or decreases the reverberation time of low frequencies bounded by the cross knob. This is particularly relevant to the perception of the materials the room is made from. As we mentioned, rock hard surfaces will reflect more bass. Softer materials tend to vibrate with the bass and absorb it rather than reflect it. So bass balance in the reverb will dramatically change the mood of the room. It is also important to keep an eye on bass frequencies in reverb as they can easily muddy your mix. Damping affects the high frequencies and will gradually shorten the reverberation time for frequencies above the set cutoff. This also relates to our perception of the materials of or in the space. Softly furnished spaces absorb high frequencies more quickly than low. Modulation introduces pitch and time variations to the reflections that can make a space sound more realistic and less regular or metallic. Algorithmic reverbs tend to generate a recognizable ringing or tone in the reverb tail that can sound artificial, like a sample looping. This control will help to eliminate that. Modulation has always been a very popular technique for reverbs, but it saw excessive use in the mid 80s to early 90s, so if you're going for that sound, don't skip these controls. Pre delay sets the delay between the source audio and the reverb tail. Bigger rooms, with walls further away, will have longer pre-delay times than smaller rooms. Convolution reverb differs from algorithmic reverb, in that the reverb they apply is often an actual recording of the reverb from a real space. So how does that work? Imagine the sound of a single wave from a source traveling in a real room or space. It will bounce around the space and what arrives at your ear will be imprinted with that room's reverb. This is like the sound of a click, or another way of looking at it, each wave, like a click, triggers the reverb sound to arrive at your ear. Convolution reverb captures one of these reverb recordings, or impulse responses as they are called, and for every sample in your audio file, triggers a copy of this impulse response, or reverb sound. The exciting thing about convolution is that you can have the actual reverb of a real and famous concert hall, for example. Cool! Fruity Convolver has the familiar controls, but also a few unique parameters like stretch that allows you to change the length and pitch of the impulse response, and also a dedicated EQ for the reverb, which you can mix in using the EQ knob. Self-convolution will convolve the reverb recording with itself before it is applied to the incoming audio. It's not just double the reverb, it's reverberating the reverb itself. This means that some of the most powerful changes you can make to a convolution reverb sounds are audio edits to the impulse response. Fruity Convolver has all of Edison's tools available to allow full editing control. We suggest watching our Edison series if you want to brush up on audio editing and specifically editing impulse responses. Here's an efficient workflow that minimizes CPU load. Making a reverb send for related instruments to share a single reverb effect rather than putting one on each mixer track. A reverb send means it's a parallel effect that contains only the reverb for certain elements in your mix and none of the dry signal. In this case, I'll select the kick and the snare and I'll route them to a free mixer track by right-clicking its routing arrow and choosing route to this track. Let's add a fruity reverb too to this new track. I'll turn the dry down all the way so we only get reverb. Now I'll set the reverb how I like it. On kick and snare, that means I'll use the stereo separation knob and I'll turn it all the way to the right for a mono reverb. Something Fruity Convolver is really useful for is simulating guitar cabinet speakers after distortion effects on guitar sounds that were recorded through a direct instrument input. This is called a cab sim, or cabinet simulation. Together with the distortion, 
This is what we call an amp sim, a simulation of what happens inside a guitar amplifier, including the output speaker cabinet. On the special effects side, Fruity Convolver comes with blur white and blur pink presets. These are convolution reverbs with pink and white noise used as the impulse response respectively. They are not designed to sound like any real space, but to completely diffuse the incoming audio into a lush, shimmery wash of sound that is perfect for ambient textures. Did you know that Fruity Convolver can also record impulse responses? Load two Fruity Convolvers in series, and then sandwich the process you want to make an IR of in between them. We'll use this free Reverb VST plugin here. I'll dial in the settings I want in the Reverb, then set the Convolver after it to record, and trigger an impulse from the first Convolver with this button here. Now I can delete the first Convolver and the VST plugin, and I'll have a perfect recreation of the settings of the reverb saved as an impulse response. Neat. You'll notice that Fruity Convolver, unlike Fruity Reverb 2, does not have modulation controls. But we do have the tools to do it ourselves. Just add it in patcher, turn off the dry signal, and modulate the signal going into the Convolver with Fruity Flanger's modulation preset, and you're set. You can add a dry path to mix dry and wet inside Patcher, or simply use the mixes built in dry wet to create a balance between reverb and original sound. Often, reverbs that sound great in isolation will overwhelm or muddy the mix when other instruments are playing. Here's where automation comes in handy. Automation allows you to use more extreme reverb settings when there is space for that sound, and cut it back in other parts of the mix when more is happening. As usual, right-click the dry-wet control in the mixer, and choose Create Automation Clip, then find a good spot to show off the reverb as a special effect. Some people call this technique Reverb Throws. I've gone through the entire project and applied reverbs and delays where I think they fit. Now, let's compare what we had at the end of the last video with what we have now at the end of this series. Now, the mix has that last little bit of depth that it was missing before. Just for giggles, here's a little montage of the results of every video in the series in order of release. Be sure to check out the video information for any manual or video links and the final example projects in this series.